Welcome back, everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Corvette Ed's Garage, House of Fast Cars, and Fast Bikes. In this episode of the Supercharger Install, whoa, what's, what, what, what the f what's going on, Axel? You have to go back to the future, Ed. What? What the f in this episode, new episode, dummy. But well, wait a minute, didn't we just do this? I just had a goddamn deja vu, man. Stay on track, dummy. Thanks for straightening me out. No, no problem, problem, dummy. You got, got it. it. Will you do me a favor and quit calling me dummy? That's disrespectful and rude. Didn't know it was gonna hurt your feelings. Sorry, dummy. Asshole. Dumb shit. Bitch. Dumbass. All right, goddamn it. That's fuck enough. You think? There ain't no winning with you. Uh, nope. Nah, uh, I, I, that's it. I'm going to get back to uh, my episode here. Now, if you all remember, the last episode was supposed to be the actual supercharger insta installation. Well, unfortunately, I realized that the bracket that I had already installed on the Corvette was incorrect. Man, was that a letdown. Uh, we all got robbed. All right, everybody. This is a hold up. Get down on the ground and you won't get hurt. So, I'm going to make it up to you in this uh, in this episode. Since then, we have gotten a new bracket and ready to install it on the Corvette, along with the supercharger and other components that are going to be installed this time around. So, stay tuned, bring your sunglasses, because things are going to start getting bright. All right, everyone, the long-awaited video. But before we move on, let me add a disclaimer. If you are susceptible to seizure due to bright lights, well, you better be prepared for this. I don't really want anybody to have any seizures on my watch. Okay, I'm prepared. I'm wearing sunglasses. So before you move on, stop the video, head on over to your drawer, find yourself a pair of cheap sunglasses and put them on and come back and watch the video. Okay. Unfortunately, mine are not cheap sunglasses. They're Ray-Bans, so, but whatever. Cheap sunglasses work just as good. As you recall, we had to modify the sound switch adapter by drilling out one of the ports and enlarging the hole. Once the hole was enlarged, we tapped out new threads. Now, the reason for doing this was to be able to use the Pro Charger oil line fitting on the sandwich plate adapter. Now with that completed sandwich plate adapter is now installed. Next it was time to go ahead and put the starter back in the car now that it's cleaned up. It was pretty ugly uh, before this. Next it was time to put in some Mobile, mobile One uh, K&N uh, oil filter. Now I like using the K&N oil filter because they're much bigger than the stock ones and of course the NGKs, uh, these plugs are colder than what I had in there which was recommended by Pro Charger. As far as the spark plugs, I always use anti-seize. I mean, it's just, uh, it's it's great stuff. You know, otherwise, it, it, uh, spark plug threads tend to stick to your block due to the heat generated by the block. However, with using the anti-seize, the next time you change the spark plug, the spark plug come out real nice. And finally, it was time to put some oil back in the motor. I'm using synthetic oil, although, Pro Charger recommends synthetic oil to run with their Pro Charger, but I, I use synthetic oil anyway. Now I did check for oil leaks and there wasn't any, which is great because I really have a thing about leaks. I hate any kind of leaks. Now moving on to the um, oil feed line installation, I'm going to go ahead and pull this plug off that I uh, used temporarily, but I kind of had a brain for it because um, I don't know why I put oil in the damn thing. I wanted to do the feed line first, but it didn't work out that way. So I did have some oil come out of it, but it wasn't really that much to really complain about. So I was good there, um, and I just ended up putting it back in regardless. Once that finally um, drained out, I went ahead and go ahead and start putting the uh, Pro Charger fitting on. And again, I don't know why the manufacturers don't give you any torque, but uh, I put the um, uh, high pressure sealant uh, 
uh, thread sealant on it and uh, you know torqued it, uh, torqued it down to the best I could being as careful as I could be being that it's aluminum and I didn't want to buy it all over again so now it's time to head on over and install the uh, oil feed line now I'm showing this part because I didn't really show you guys uh, what I did underneath there on my previous video so I, I figured I better add it on here so you know what's going on and if you're doing some similar project uh, you can uh, use this as a reference now I didn't apply uh, thread sealant to the uh, fitting of the uh, uh, the Pro Charger fitting uh, because it's an and fitting so it shouldn't be necessary however if it needs it I'll do it later film's kind of choppy but I just wanted to give you an idea of how the oil uh, feed line is being routed to the supercharger um, right around the steering column right up to the supercharger so since we're moving on to installing the alternator I, I did have to modify one of the holes on the uh, alternator uh, the supercharger boat was oversized which uh, not a problem with me not really taking off that much metal so no worries in compromising the integrity of the alternator the first thing that I want to do is install the bracket now this is as easy as you might think uh, requires two bolts and two spacers uh, for the block uh, torque them down good to go now before we can move on to the alternator I got to take that top hose off now that's a stock hose and this will be replaced with the Pro Charger hose now the instructions advise that you use the CS130 alternator that uh, the 86 and up uses why because it's a smaller alternator the original alternator on this one I believe was S17 or S12 um, it's it's a pretty big alternator the reason being uh, is because the alternator, uh, the bigger alternator will not clear the power steering uh, reservoir. Okay, as you can see here. Um, even with the CS130 alternator, as small as it is, uh, it's really a tight fit. I, I, I got maybe what, about a half an inch clearance between the power steering unit, uh, power steering reservoir and the uh, alternator so uh, I'm glad I did make the switch now I did opt to get an upgraded CS130 that pushes out 160 amps on the alternators are all those amps necessary I might be running two MSD boxes however more on that later so here I'm kind of eyeing things because I want to fabricate a support bar from the engine block to the supercharger bracket more on that later now that we got the alternator in we're moving on to the supercharger now installing the supercharger did not really go as smoothly as i wanted it to because the oil return line fitting was a little bit too big no matter what position that i put it in there was really not enough space underneath the uh supercharger with all the uh steering components i'm able to rotate the supercharger in up and down uh direction uh, just by loosening the top bolts on the supercharger and that was okay but the, the fitting was still too big so no matter where I, I, I rotated it it wasn't going to work if I had it up high and too high it's, it was hitting the hood just pop the hood so that didn't work for me so I, I opted to use the bar fitting that was also provided by Pro Charger for the return line on the uh, oil pan. This here was supposed to go into the pan, this, uh, this part here, uh, and uh, I opted to do it the other way because it was a more cleaner install and I just didn't want to have any metal shavings inside that pan going through the motor. So that, that, that's what it was, I was supposed to do. I ended up using it on the bottom of the Pro Charger. That worked out really good because it's, it's a straight down pipe I was actually able to finagle it in between the suspension components. So that worked out pretty good. So that was a home run. Score. It's good. Now the alternator, it actually looks pretty good on there. Uh, the spacers provided by Pro Charger was spot on. Now once I got the oil fitting line situated, uh, the rest of the install went uh, pretty smoothly. As you can see, I got blue tape around the uh, bracket. I'm sure glad I did that because I had this feeling that I was going to be wrestling this damn thing. 
it's just not enough room underneath that uh, supercharger I mean very minimum uh, you have your uh, upper a arm uh, steering components up there which was really fighting me the whole time now here you see the oil return line pointing down and the feed line pointing up it's a beautiful thing so with nothing else left in our way go ahead and uh, torque down the bolts on the supercharger check the bolts on the alternator and also check the bolts on the supercharger bracket make sure everything's torqued once i got all that ironed out i needed to go on move move on to cutting the inner fender well on the corvette which I didn't really want to do. I had no choice because when you let the hood down, the inner fender well was hitting the supercharger. So, uh, as you can see here, um, I'm cutting away. And actually, this is a freeform. I didn't uh, really mark it up or anything. Uh, I just freeformed it. I tried marking it up at first, but it didn't work out. It was alcohol wiped off the marks, and I just said, hell with it. I just went for it. So, it, that turned out pretty good. I've seen other interfering cuts on YouTube that looked pretty bad uh, and actually this one came out pretty good I was pretty happy with it so once that was done pretty much it was all over I needed just to go ahead and put, install the air filter uh, and just uh, rotate the uh, clamp on the supercharger where I'm actually able to access that clamp at any given notice so other than that I mean, uh, it all went pretty good. I mean, look at it. It looks really nice. And there's just so much shine from this damn supercharger. I'm just, I'm happy that I got the polished version. I would not have been happy with the satin one. Originally, I received the satin supercharger instead of the polished aluminum. So I could have said, hey, hell with it. I got the supercharger, but you know what? I'm not in a hurry on this project. And actually, this is the first project that I've ever taking my time with uh, most of the project I've done in the past it was slam bam thank you ma'am and when you do it that way you know you, you ended up uh, having to go back over some type of work because you ended up working in that type of manner all good though normally I would have had this done in about a month and boom bam zip we're, we're on our, we're on our way but I'm glad I'm taking my time on this. Besides this Corvette, everything on the Corvette is tight. I just can't tell you how much a pain of an ass Corvettes are to work on. They're all tight, the way it is. Anyway, so there you have it there, guys. Um, thank you for watching the video. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you can see the next video coming. The next video is going to be the actual intercooler installation. We're going to take that one into two stages. We're going to actually install the intercooler, and then we're going to install the piping. And that'll get us real close to almost finishing this car. We still got more to go, though. I mean, we still got the electronic ignition to take care of. We have the gauges that we need to get, fuel pressure gauge, wide band gauge, boost gauge to put on. I mean, there's still a little bit more to go, but that's not going to slow the project down as this whole installation has taken. So stay tuned, and again, thank you for watching the video. Oh, Axel, what's going on? We need to go back to the future. Again? It's your kid. He totaled the Corvette. Sorry, everyone. Dummy had to go back to the future to save his car. Oh yeah, and his kid. And if you want to watch more of the Dummies Pro Charger series, click on the playlist on the right hand side. Thanks for watching.